<laughs> if I pronounce the wrong word, amen. I told him, I said, we have, uh, we have to get a Spanish class going here, Mayor. You have to get a Spanish class going here in this church that we can able, better able to relate to our Hispanic brothers and sisters. But all the way from Cali, Colombia this morning, we thank God for him. We've been supporting him and his wife, uh, Pastor Jean, for a number of years in preaching the gospel in Colombia. So together, my brothers and sisters, can we give the Lord a hand of praise as we welcome from Cali, Colombia, our missionary, Reverend Mark Divine. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. I just sense someone is looking over the banisters of eternity and just looking down at us and going, yeah, that's right. The worship, the praise. That's such, a, such, a, such courage that God has given this congregation on this anniversary day. Praise God. Excuse me while I take a drink. There are things that I want to try to bring to our attention today out of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And through the desarrollo, through the dialogue that we'll be having based on Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, I want to just bring out some of the realities of what's happening in the witness of Jesus in Cali, Colombia. It's a wonderful place to be where God has called you to be. That's where you should be, where God has called you. And God has called us for a lot of years now to Cali, Colombia. And we just want to encourage ourselves. I, I want to be speaking to myself out of this courage of enduring the race. I, I hear the message of uh, unto this or to this point, God has been with us. And now we need courage and endurance to continue to where God wants to take us. I mean, it's fabulous to hear the testimony of the witness of God through many of you, through many in this community. And, and now we must endure further the race that God has set before us. And that's what Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 talk about. The enduring the race, the reaching the end, setting our eyes on Him. And the bunch of witnesses that we have around us. It begins with speaking of those witnesses of chapter 11. Abraham and Moses and people who had great success and people who had great failure. And yet by faith, they failed. For their weakness proved God's strength. Isn't that something? I mean, we've got to endure things based on the witness of the Holy Spirit in the lives of many, many, many that are around us. And in their weakness, we shall not be shamed. We will despise shame, says this chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We won't be despising our weakness. We will be despising the shame of our weakness. Because in our weakness, God is made strong. He has done it time and time again, and he will continue to do it. So how many witnesses are we here today? How many witnesses do we have here? The witness that is an encouragement to the others that are around us. We need each other. I'm encouraged by Pastor Roy. I mean, he gets up in the morning. I think it must be 5 o'clock in the morning, maybe earlier, to be on devotionals at 6. Is that right? He invited me to be there, and I took my shower earlier than usual. And there I was with the witness of Pastor Roy to many, many, many that are listening in the morning devotionals. I, I was encouraged by Eli, Elijah saying, I'm Pastor Elijah. <laughs> I was encouraged by Mia or Maya. Is, how do you pronounce it? Maya. That wonderful? There, you know, God is going to encourage you today to continue the race, to not be weakened by either the height or the largeness or the difficulty that you may be challenged with, because in the enduring of this race, we will see something far beyond what we would have ever expected to see. We're looking at enduring a race for some kind of reward, which is awesome and is our right. The reward 
that God has for everyone's faith that stands firm and is encouraged and is enduring, God has rewards. But there is a bigger reward than those rewards, as fun as they may be. You know, I almost didn't come with a suit today, and I was rewarded that the cleaners, they close at 4 on Saturdays, and I got there at 5.15. Uh-oh, I only have one suit. And I had written Pastor Roy and said, I'm getting my only suit cleansed, cleaned in the cleaner. Uh, do you want me to come with just a slack and a shirt? Do you want me to come with a slack, a shirt, and a tie? Do you want me to come with a slack, a shirt, a tie, and a coat? How do you want me to come? And he said, it's our anniversary. Please, Pastor Mark, dress up as best as you can with suit, shirt, tie, slack, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Well, the cleaners didn't have much to do with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But what it did have a lot to do is that, you know, I'm there at this door. Everything's dark inside. It's all, the, you know, they've all gone home. It's, I didn't know it was a 4 o'clock. I thought it was a 7 o'clock opening like on weekdays. But on Saturdays, guess what? They go home early. And here I am with the door closed. I see the lock, the bolted lock between the two doors. Nobody's inside. It's all dark. It's 5.15 and I'm going, oh, Jesus Pastor Roy is not going to like me in blue jeans. <laughs> well, guess what? While I'm staring inside the window the, through the glass, all of a sudden a face appears. And it's this oriental woman, and she says, we're closed. I said, I know, but you know, I took my ticket. I showed it. I've already paid. Could I please just have my jacket for the anniversary? <laughs> and she opened the door, and there, here I am. My only suit. And I was thinking of that, Pastor, when you were saying today, just the small things, you know. Miracles maybe happened yesterday in just small ways. That's a pretty small way. But hey, I'm glad you enjoy my suit. Ah, oh, praise God. Thank God for water. Anyway, why don't we go to the race of faith is the title of the passage, not the inspirational t t title, but to help us in our reading, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Therefore, therefore, meaning all the 35 or more witnesses of chapter 11, therefore, because of them, because of their success in the immediate warfares or the immediate temporal blessings, many, many of those witnesses had, and also in the cut asunder and in the despised that many, many, many of the witnesses of faith also had endured. Therefore, because of all that, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, you know, that's where I, I jump off a little bit at thinking of Maya and thinking of Pastor Roy and thinking of Sister Carol, thinking of all of you. As witnesses, I'm thinking of people that are around us. They are witnesses made in the image of God, created in the image of God. And here in the body of Christ, in the church of God, the redeemed, you know, they shine through. They're transparent. I heard a story about a, a little boy that, that went to his, with his mom to a Catholic church and, and, and said, Mom, why are all those, what are all those glass you know, with beautiful colors. What, what are all those? Oh, those are saints. Those are saints. In the Catholic Church, you know, they have saints. And those are saints that, that we honor. I don't know what else she said. But the next day at school, the teacher asked the whole class, this little girl said, who knows what a saint is? She raised up her hand. And, she, and said, okay, what's a saint? A saint is someone who is very colorful and transparent. I thought, my word, that's good from a Catholic church. I like that. Very colorful and transparent. And we are all made in the image of God, very colorfully and transparent as we become redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That transparency is seen more and more and more and more. But I want to tell you that in Cali, we have a, an outreach going into the jails in Cali and in some of the communities you know, 30 minutes away from Cali. And in that prison environment, I see Jesus. I see the witness of Jesus in those inmates. And, you know, I, I, get, I get weary. I get tired. I, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous 
a, a hardship for the body to go into a prison with 6,000 inmates. The other prison has something like 4,000. We do three prisons twice a year with a group of all the churches in the city that want to come and join us to go share God's love and the witness of Jesus to all these inmates in the different prisons. We take one Friday for one prison, the other Friday for the other prison, and the last Friday for the third prison. And it's done twice a year in December for Christmas and in the summer for a sandwich and sharing the bread of life with our fellow inmates. Now I'm, on, I'm wondering, you know, to the Lord, I'm saying, Lord, I, I, I get weary, I get tired. He wants me to endure, and I'm saying, but I, I, I don't want to go in that environment. I, it's, 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 you know, it smells, and, 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 you know, if you've been in any kind of jail environment in Latin America or Central America, you know what I'm talking about. It's just moist and, and sweaty, and everybody is, you know, with their, either shirts off or half shirts off, tattooed, and, and I, and it's just like, how do I go in with a hundred of these Christian brothers and sisters from different churches and from the community. Sometimes they're not even believers yet, but they want to join to share the to share what they have from God, share a smile that they have, share it with others. And so there we are in all the patios of this prison of six thousand or so prisoners, and we go with a with fifteen in that group, with another fifteen or eighteen in that group, with another fifteen, eighteen or twenty in that group with the whole equipment with the PA system, with the drums, with the guitar, with the mics, with the preaching of the gospel to all the inmates in the whole day tour of 6,000 inmates. And one of those days I was kind of like struggling with the Lord. I didn't want to get up the next day at 4 in the morning. I don't know, Pastor Roy is going to have to pray with me about getting up early. He's going to invite me to another devotional, I think. Yes. Anyway, I'm thinking, you know, before the day comes, I'm thinking, you know, uh, at night, get up at four. It's nighttime still in the tropics of Colombia. I mean, there's no like winter and summer. It's just even all year long, depending on the altitude. And I'm thinking, I don't want to go. And the Holy Spirit, I thought, whispered to my heart, won't you go visit my little criminals? Won't you go visit my little criminals? I mean, he has value in those men and women. He has tremendous value. And the value that he has on them should shine in my eyes to be encouraged and, and, and to not grow weary in being able to share with these people and see in them Jesus, even though they are not yet saved. And that's going to be the conclusion. Because I, I believe God wants to tell you and I, I believe he wants to tell us to not weaken before the difficult people that perhaps you have around you. Let's keep on reading. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go with the race here. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I wanted to bring two leaves of lettuce, <laughs> but I thought I better not. I don't think it will go very well, but there's two lettuces here. There's two lettuce. Let us lay aside and let us run the race. To be able to run the race, you need the other lettuce. Let us lay aside. Now, what are we supposed to lay aside? It says two things there. We're supposed to lay aside what? Every weight and sin. Not every sin. He's just talking perhaps about one kind of sin that has to do with this whole chapter 11 and now chapter 12. What would be the sin that he would be referring to every weight so there's a lot of different kinds of weights not all weights are sin but those weights can start creeping in and cause you to sin perhaps the sin that he's mentioning here because it's in a singular mode and the sin that so easily besets us what would be the sin what's your best guess what would be the sin what's the topic of chapter 11 and now chapter 12 the race of faith. I would think that the weight, the weight that starts grabbing you and not wanting you to go to the prison, not wanting you to go to the outreach, getting weary in the well-doing, getting tired and not, and not endeavoring to strengthen yourself in the multitude of witnesses of, of people that are around you to give you courage and give you strength. I believe that the, the weight, the weights, it didn't say plural, but every weight implies several kinds of weight 
your children, perhaps? What kind of weight are you valuing more than the witness of faith that Jesus is placing before you for you to do, for you to carry out his command? And, you know, I, I was thinking of having several of you come up and, and be, you know, wait. But then I thought I might insult someone, you know, that's a little weighty. But I wanted the five here with, with every weight, every kind of weight. And just kind of like number the kind of weight that we need to lay aside. Let us lay aside. Can you remember the lettuce leaf that I had in my pocket, but I didn't show you because I didn't bring it. I didn't think it would be cool. But let us lay aside every weight. Now, the weight can become a sin of disobedience, of unbelief. The weight can become a sin where you don't believe that those tiny little criminals are in the image of their creator and that God wants you to go there to smell the filth, to see the, the strangeness in the eyes and watch the love of God through the testimony of Jesus, his only begotten son, reach into their hearts and as they start warming up and becoming like our long lost brothers and sisters. That's what we're doing in Cali. Mostly now when we go back next year in March 2022, we're going to be heading up with the community of churches in the city of Cali and doctors and medics from the community of Cali to do, to do ministry to the prison, to the prisons, to do health brigades in the prisons. We've done, I think, like three before the pandemic struck. The pandemic struck and all the prisoners were imprisoned, but without visit, without anybody coming to visit. We couldn't go in to share with them. So they asked us to please tape the message of Jesus, to tape the message and the, and the words of the songs that we go in and sing with them. There's one that says, Cansado del camino, sediento de ti. You know it in English? You're, you're weary of walking, you're weary of the road, and I'm thirsting for you. I'm thirsting for you. And we see the thirst in their, in their eyes and in their hearts as they begin to receive from Jesus. Let's keep on reading and trying to explain some of this that I have in me to share to me. I need this preaching. I need this, Pastor Roy. I need this more than perhaps I can... I can realize I, I need now this year where you are visiting churches, and this is the first church that we visited to preach at, and we have a year ahead of us. Thanks for clapping because you gave me time to drink a little bit. Very kind of you. And now, you know, to not grow weary, to be strengthened in the Lord. To, to watch him open up doors of partnerships. Pastor Roy was mentioning when we first talked on the phone and now again about maybe, maybe being able to visit the children of the inmates with some presents, with some gifts. Wouldn't that be wonderful from, from Living Hope Outreach Center to Cali, Colombia, con amor, with much love, giving to the inmates. Uh, children. They are allowed to go in on, fr on Saturdays and on Sundays. So the wives or, or the mistresses or whoever, the, the mother of their children are lined up for hours outside the prison to be, you know, to be requisado. How you say that in English? I don't know. To be checked out for drugs or whatever. And then they, they go in with their kids. And so there's a long time in that line where we can share the gospel and share the gifts that God would give their children and show them that they have value, that they have meaning for God, and that this comes in, in the love of God and in the name of Jesus to you, little boy, little girl. Their eyes brighten up. I mean, they love gifts, don't you? And so that's, that's, a, that's a fabulous possibility. But all this to say that it does not matter what the race that is placed before you. That's the next phrase I want to, I want to share. The, the race is placed before you. It's like you don't get to choose the race that's placed before you. It is placed before you. And you're called to 
run the race and endure the race. Let's keep on reading. Let us, that's the second let us, right? Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, I was, you know, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, okay, the race is Cali, the race is the prisoners, the race is all this itinerating across the United States with churches like yourselves who, who support us and who back us up in prayer and in finances. I'm thinking, okay, that's the race. Yes, it is. You know, we, we have to endure the, the, the cleaners that, you know, you missed it by an hour and 15 minutes. And, you know, you got to endure there and think, oh, my word, I'm going to go without my suit to the pastor's you know, celebra- anniversary celebration. And you got to endure these things. And they're, they, they are success stories that God allows us to live in and to delight in. And it becomes a witness to others. But there is a larger panorama. And that's what I want to just, just like, just call my attention to and just say, Mark, look at it. Look at it. It's not what you think. It's not only those small successes as, as a witness of my power and my miracle work in you. It's more than that that you're thinking. It's much more. How, how many of you know that God has something much more than what you're thinking right now about the race that's set before you? There's something huge that you can't possibly fathom. We can't possibly fathom. It's eternity with Jesus. We sung about it. We sing about it. But how many of us are really like, like okay, this little bit of you know, shame that I'm going through right now. I'm just going to, sh- I'm just going to say, praise God for this weakness that I'm in. Praise God for this that I've been praying for and that didn't come to pass. And I'm thinking, this is my race and I failed. No, it's part of it. El galardón es mucho más grande. The reward is so much bigger than these little small successes in God that he has allowed us to experience. So let's keep on reading that. Looking unto Jesus, this is verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, hold on, we, we read something about what was set before somebody. Did, do you remember that in the previous verse? We've got to run the race, endure it, and that race is what? Is set before us. And now we're reading in, in verse 2, that Jesus, the awesome finisher of our faith, for the joy that was, what? Set before him. So, you know, he's the first witness. He is the witness. He is from whom we get all of, of our witness. It's in him we are growing into the image and to the likeness of him together. And so when I see the sister, when I see the brother, when I see the mayor... When I see Pastor Roy, I'm, I'm thinking, that's, that's just a little bit of the primary witness, which is Jesus, for the joy placed before him. Now, there's four or five things, and here I wanted to get another couple, five of you, to exemplify these four things. We have one, which is the joy set before him. Who can come up here and be an example of joy? Can someone come up here? Can you just break the, the routine a little bit? There we go. Yay. Woo. Malcolm. Lord bless you, bro. Okay. He's a joy, right? He's a joy placed before him. Okay. Now what's the next word? What's the next person we need up here? The joy set before him. He endured the cross. I want somebody who exemplifies endurance. Who is here the most? Hey, there you go. Brother Endurance. Now stand right there by Brother Joy. Brother Joy, Brother Endurance. Say hi to Brother Joy. Hi, Brother Joy. Say hi to Brother Endurance. Say hi. There you go, Brother Endurance. Okay, who's the other? Endurance, the race. No, where we are, where we are. I'm reading the first endurance. This is the second endurance of Jesus. Endurance. Uh, The cross. We need a brother who is familiar with the cross. Where is he? Or where is she? Someone? The cross. So we have joy, we have endurance, and we have the cross. Yay! There you are. Okay, and I think there's two more here. Uh, The cross, despising the shame. Who here would say, I am going to despise? I I am going to say, no way to shame. I am not going to be identified with shame. 
I am going to despise. There you go. Wow. Despising the shame. And I think there's one more. The last one. What is it? Despising the shame. And sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now this is the end result. Sitting with the Father. What did, what did Maya sing? Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with the Father. That's what, that's what all these witnesses are about. I mean, these witnesses aren't to get more strength so that you could be like Moses and part the Red Sea or like Abraham and do all those great things that are witnesses of God's power in that chapter 11. But he wants you also to be sawn asunder if need be. He also needs you to go to visit 6,000 inmates and spend the whole day from 4 in the morning till 8 at night. And be so, so tired, so, so weary. And he wants you to do that for the sake of his little ones, of his little criminals. The first time I went to prison, it was to visit one of the members of church that landed in prison for accu accusations of money laundering. Because Cali, as you may know, in Colombia, had its field day with laundering monies. And it's still happening, but not as, not as opulent, not as visible as it was before. And this was as it was before in 2000 and uh, I think that's 2004 or 5 or 6. And so visiting him in jail was a hardship that Gene and I carried on for Wednesday after Wednesday after Wednesday after Wednesday. The first Wednesday I went, we had to cross the patio. The guards opened the door to this patio full of men, semi-undressed. You know, they, they call out to each other, there's a woman, there's a woman, get dressed. You know, they're all men in there and the here comes my wife, you know, and she has to go like this. And so here we are going across the patio. The guards close the door behind us. You hear this heavy lock, close the door behind us. And we walk through these men, my wife and I, to Brother Raul, who is way at the end of the patio. And one of the, one of the inmates walks past me real quick and says, here, hold this for me. And he shoves it right into my stomach. I thought, oh, this is it. And I looked down, there's no blood, thank God. He was just doing a trick on me, you know, to kind of, kind of see where my joy was. Yeah? Was I going to be joyful? Okay, so we have the race that is placed before the primary principal witness, which is Jesus. And here we're going to be concluding now, because I, I want to take us to a place that only the Holy Spirit can take us, which is looking at the inmate, or looking at your husband, you might not see much difference between your husband and an inmate. You have the joy? You're going to despise the shame? Right? You're going to endure? You're going to sit down at the right hand of the Father and say, it doesn't matter to me what comes at me. There should be a song that way, is there? It doesn't matter to me what the world might say. There might be a song like that already. Yeah? Anyway, let's say bye to joy. Let's say bye to endurance. Let's say bye to shame. No, cross. And let's say bye to despising the shame. Now what I want to do to finish, I think, it's, I think it's from the Lord. He'll tell me afterwards if it wasn't. But I, I think God wants us to do something in the house of God, which is look at one another and say, you're a witness for me. Your eyes are beautiful, the way they express something that's beyond description. I, I, I love the joy that comes out of you. I, I want us to... Just take a brief five minutes, not long, and practice seeing the witness. Now, who is the witness? Who is the primary witness? Jesus. You know, we can't get in the way of that stained glass window. We can't get in the way of the light that wants to shine through and be, and be a witness wherever you are with your husband. Maybe your husband's unsaved. Maybe your wife is unsaved. And, and God wants us to do a secondary thing, which is at the altar, just say, it doesn't matter to me 
what comes my way. I want to see Jesus and the witness of Jesus in my unsaved husband, my unsaved son, my unsaved boss who is just a bad boss. And I want us to finish up tonight, this morning, this evening. Is it already evening? Have I been talking that long? Sorry, Mayor. <laughs> I want to suggest at the, at the altar, it doesn't necessarily have to be up here for time's sake, but maybe it should be, maybe you should say, okay, God, I received this. I want to despise my shame. Can, can, you, can you figure those, those two words out in your mind, despise, shame? I mean, it's the shame of your failure. It's the shame of your weakness. And God is saying, despise it. Despise it. What's, what's despise? Give me a definition of despise. I, look at, I looked it up in Google, but I forgot. Despise is, despise is like, eh, eh, eh. in Spanish we say, eh. In English, how do you say, eh? Despise the shame. And, and the shame of not having believed and not continuing to believe. For that unsaved one that's in your that's in your kitchen, so to speak, that's in the intimate things of your life, and it messes up with it messes up with the joy, it messes up with 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 the cross that is making you more and more like Jesus. Could you stand please with me? And let's pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to see you and my brother and sister. I want to encourage them. I want to be a witness of Jesus for him, for her. And I want her to be a witness for Jesus to me. Could you just turn to someone right now and let's just practice this. I want to say to the mayor, Mayor, I see Jesus in you. I saw Jesus in you when you walked in. It was wonderful. Go ahead. Tell someone. Tell someone. Sister, I saw Jesus in you. When you said, and was it you that said, and where's your wife? No, I thought it was you. Oh, it was you. You said, where's your wife and where's your grandkids, remember? Bring them. I had to, in the moment there, despise the shame of, like Pastor Malcolm was his children. And my, my grandchildren stayed at home with Jean. That's why she's not here. So thank you. For showing Jesus. Okay, now let's do the final thing, which is at, at, at the cross, he is chiseling away the, the resentment, the hardship, the tiredness of standing in the gap for that loved one that's unsaved. And I want us to say, Jesus, at the cross, mold me, change me. Jesus at the cross, I want to be able to reflect the witness of Jesus through me to him or to her. Doesn't matter how hard it is, I'm going to, I'm going to reject the shame and I'm going to believe you. Can we pray that? Can we lift up our hands and say, Jesus, I want to do this will of the Father, which is represent Jesus here on earth. I want to be like that transparent window glass. I want to be able to shine through my life with the love of Jesus. And Lord, I need to do that for the unsaved. I need to do this. I need to live crucified together with Jesus. Lord, I need this. I need this more than anything else. I need this so that I would not grow weary in this race of faith. Because there are certain rewards that are so, I'm so grateful for them. The testimony that you give us of, of, of the courage and the endurance in the small things. But you want us to see Jesus. You want us to see yourself. Lord, in the name of Jesus, show yourself in that unsaved one. Show little, little bits, little, little shining lights that he doesn't even see. Lord, I, I could sense the love you had for Judas as he was planning the betrayal. You loved him. You loved him. You let him be part of what was happening to the ends of you dying for all of humanity. You, you, you shone for, for Judas uh, the, the light from another world 
so that he could see, so, so that he could repent, so that he could warm the heart to the reality of you being crucified. Lord, how many of us have our Judases right there in our home? How many of us have our Judases that are there and, and, and they hurt us, they wound us, we feel shame, and you want us to run the race with them and showing them your love and being able to be encouraged by the little destejos, by the little brightness that comes every morning or that comes in an afternoon or a little bit of kindness that came from that austere and, and, and heavy-handed person in my life and that I could rejoice in your little criminals and say, Jesus, you show yourself and you show your image through them and I want to rejoice in you in the name of Jesus. We thank you. And everybody says, and everybody claps to Jesus. <laughs>